Welcome to Grade 10 Science. This is Jennifer Sanyel, your teacher for this subject. Our topic for today is actually about the Earth's meat. So in this video, we will be recalling the concepts related to volcanoes and your earthquakes. So first we have volcanism. We all know what a volcano is. So basically, it is a mountain or hill formed around the vent of the Earth's crust through which hot, molten rock or magma and hot gases are emitted. Okay. There are three types of volcano according to volcanic activity. So I hope you still remember them. Your active volcanoes, your dormant volcanoes, and the extinct volcanoes. Okay. So active, it is erupting or recently has erupted like the Taal volcano. Dormant volcano, um, its activity actually stops for a considerable time. And extinct volcanoes, so there is evidence that proves that it will not erupt again. So types of volcanoes according to shape or structure, we have the composite or the stratovolcanoes. So these are tall volcanoes with a stratified structure made up of alternating layers of cinders, ash, lava, and Ash and lava flows. Then we have the cinder volcanoes. You have a steep cone and are made up of loose cinders. And the shield volcanoes, which are the lowest volcanoes with wide, gently sloping cones made of solidified lava flows. Now we have two basic types of volcanic eruptions. We have the quiet eruptions and the explosive eruptions. Okay. So in quiet eruptions, the magma has low silica content, it has low viscosity, and the magma flows easier so gases bubble out gently. Okay. While for the explosive eruptions, the magma has high silica content, it has high viscosity, and the magma doesn't always flow out of vent, so it builds up. Okay. So what happens is it's like a cork in a bottle which suddenly explodes. Okay. Now, Going back to volcanoes, so this is just an overview of your, or these are actually um, a recall of your concepts about volcanism. Now let's have your earthquakes. Okay, so earthquakes actually occur when the Earth's stored energy, whether chemical or gravitational energy, usually in the form of strain and rocks, is suddenly released. Okay, so energy is transmitted as earthquake or seismic waves. Okay, so as you could see here. Now you see the energy, this causes now the tremor on the land surface, okay? So this is the anatomy of an earthquake. So you have here the focus or the hypocenter. So this is the point within the earth where an earthquake rupture starts, okay? So it would now send, so this focus would be sending seismic waves that transmit the energy released by an earthquake, okay? Now, the epicenter, this one we usually hear um, in news or in reports. So, this is the point at which the, or this is the point at the surface of the earth directly above the focus. Okay, so in reports, you would, you would hear that the epicenter is at this location, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now here are the plates. So, these are the ones moving. So, these are the massive rocks that make up the outer layer of the Earth's surface. So, ito yung mga gumagalaw okay, during an earthquake. And last, you have your fault. So, this is a fracture in the rocks that make up the Earth's crust. Okay? So, the Philippines is actually located at the ring of fire. So, marami po tayong fault lines. Okay? As I mentioned in the previous video, um, if you're going to follow FIVOX, Okay, try nyo, siyang, try nyo silang i-follow sa Facebook uh, and get notifications. You would see that there are reports every day about earthquakes. Okay? Maski yung mga low magnitude na earthquakes are being reported. Okay? Now, earthquake can be detected by a seismograph and a seismoscope. Okay? So, a seismograph or a seismometer is an, uh, uh, is an instrument that detects seismic waves produced by an earthquake. Okay, while a seismoscope detects underground motion, it cannot read continuous ground movements. Okay, now can we predict earthquakes? Of course not. Okay, because we don't know when an energy underground would be released. Okay, so na detect lang natin yung seismic waves kapag nag ano na siya, pag nag start na siyang ma release ng isang earthquake. Okay, 
Now, earthquake detection could also be done by a teleseismometer. So, it uses now electronic sensors and amplifiers, which can cover more extensive frequency range. And you also have your GPS or the global positioning system. Okay, so your seismometer can detect vibrations coming from an earthquake while the GPS quantifies how much an earthquake fault has moved. Okay, so if you are going to follow news, so initially, like for example, um, a few minutes after the initial shaking, so meron ng initial report agad. Then after a few hours, magkakaroon na ng comprehensive report about uh, the earthquake. So it is done because of the GPS or with the help of your GPS. So how do we measure earthquakes? Okay, so we use two terms. We have the intensity and magnitude. So intensity simply refers to the measure of the surface damage. Okay, so intensity zero, obviously there's no earthquake. Intensity one, slight lang siya, slight damage. Intensity two, you would observe slight shaking ng mga chandeliers or slight movement. Intensity three, it is already visible. And as seen in this picture, intensity 4, 5, um, you would see now major movements or major damages at your house. Okay? And 6, 7, yan yung mga damages. Ito yung mga examples ng mga damages that could be described by the intensity. Okay? Well, for magnitude, it is the measure of the energy released from the, sur from the source or epicenter of an earthquake. Okay? So, you have now, let's say, um, magnitude 2 or 3. These are the minor earthquakes. They are usually not felt but can be recorded by a seismograph. Um, a light earthquake ranges from 2.5 or let's say ito, from magnitude 4 to 5. So, they are often felt but only causes minor damage. Yung mga moderate earthquakes, um, it causes slight damage to buildings. Yung 6, 6.1 to 6.9, they may cause major damage in populated areas. So recently, we have um, a magnitude 6.4 earthquake in Davao. I think it's in Davao, somewhere um, south. Then we have um, magnitude 7 to 7.9. So it's a major earthquake causing serious damage. So diba, it is predicted na magkakaroon daw ng the big one which could affect NCR. So, hopefully, it's not... Actually, we could not predict the earthquakes as I mentioned. Okay? So, yeah. And then, yung greatest, we have 8 or greater. So, um, great earthquakes that can totally destroy communities near its epicenter. Okay? So, yeah. For the intensity, uh, it varies among countries. So, we have our own our own intensity scale as proposed by FIVOX. So, well, for the magnitude, we actually follow the Richter scale. Okay? Now, what's the relationship of volcanic eruptions to earthquakes? Okay? So, according to Nat Geo, there is actually no evidence. Actually, the geologists are debating on this. Okay? But, if you're going to look at tectonics, it is possible that your um, your earthquakes could trigger volcanic eruptions. Okay? So, the seismic waves could actually trigger now the magma. So, the pressure underneath could actually cause the volcanic eruptions. Okay? Now, as mentioned, this is this will just be an overview or this is um, a summary already of the modules that I have sent to you. So, if you have questions, comment down. Comment them down or you may send a personal message or you may email me. Okay? So that would be all for today. I hope you learned something. I'll see you on our next video. Bye!